Calorimetry is the idea of measuring heat. Um, when we talk about it in a high school chemistry class, what we're usually talking about is the finding some unknown value using something we know. So let me kind of run through what that looks like. So we're going to use Q equals MC delta T to determine usually C. We're trying to find the specific heat of an unknown by using a known. Um, and so the big key thing here is we've got to do this in a closed system. And that means there should be no heat weaving in, into, going into the system or weaving the system unless we want it to. And generally we don't want it to. The only heat that should be involved in the system is what we're using. And you use a device called a calorimeter. Um, the ones you'll use in a high school lab are not very great. This is what a fancy one looks like. Highly insulated. Uh, the reaction actually takes place in this little thing right here. And then all the rest of that is, is insulated to keep any heat from getting into or out of that little canister. You know, sometimes in labs you can use like styrofoam cups. Kind of sort of work. Um, I've used some that use kind of air as the insulator. They work better. Uh, just depends on how well the students use them. But the whole idea of a calorimeter is you're trying to measure what's going on inside the system without any interference. And you're trying to isolate it as much as possible. So the classic method is to do this. And it's long. Um, and I'm going to try to run through an example of what this looks like. But these are the steps. So you would measure the mass of some unknown metal. That's usually what you're doing here. You're doing some type of unknown metal and you would record the amount of water that you're going to be using and record its mass as well. Then you pour that water into the calorimeter and you let it come to just whatever the ambient temperature is and that's going to be T1. So let it come to room temperature, let it just kind of sit and settle and you, know, you don't want to use it straight out of the tap. You want it to kind of come to room temperature. The more stable it is, the better off everything will be. Then you're going to take another beaker of water, this is completely different water, and you're going to boil that water and drop the unknown into it. And you're going to wait until it is thoroughly heated all the way through. You want that piece of metal to be thoroughly heated all the way through. That's why you don't want a huge chunk of metal. You want something relatively small that will heat fast. And that temperature of the boiling water, which you'll use the thermometer to measure, is going to be T1 for your metal. And so now we've got the masses of the water, the mass of the metal, and T1 for both of them. Okay, so the water's at ambient temperature, we've measured that temperature. We've got the metals in boiling water, we've measured that temperature. Now you take them and you mix them together. And so then you put it into the calorimeter and then you close the calorimeter. So that what's going to happen to the hot piece of metal? It's going to cool off as you put it in the water. What's going to happen to the water? It's going to warm up because it's getting the heat from the metal. And so we then allow the temperature to come to equilibrium. So as the hot water heats the metal, and the water cools off, eventually you're going to reach a stable temperature. And that is T2 for both of them. Because they're going to be at the same temperature. As the metal cools off, the water is going to warm up until they reach this new temperature. We then plug all this in to essentially this. We're going to do a heat equation for the metal and a heat equation for the water. The metal's losing its heat, so we put a negative there just to signify what's going on and to help with the calculation. So let's run through an example so you can see how this works. These are big, kind of nasty, annoying problems to do. Um, so I don't do a whole lot of these with my classes. Um, I may do one lab with it just to have them do it, and that's be about it. All right, so you have 33.45 gram sample of some unknown metal. It's heated to 99.7 degrees. You then place it in the calorimeter with da da da, da. You can read all that. All right, you're allowed to come to the same temperature, and then you get your final, this is your T2, what they equalize to. All right, so identifying variables. This is, there's a lot of variables because we got two different things. We got the metal and we got the water. So identify your variables for the metal, that the metal's got this mass and these temperatures. Here's the variables for the water, mass, two temperatures, and we also know the specific heat of water, 4.18. We then use the equation. The equation is long. So MC delta T for the metal, MC delta T for the water. And you can use M and W even though they are somewhat confusing. 
um, you got to be careful to make sure you're distinguishing what variables are what. That's the biggest place where people make mistakes is putting things in the wrong spots. It's part of why I do this. Really trying to nail down what belongs to what. All right, then I plug in everything. And I've got everything plugged in except for this, C metal. Do my algebra. And you get that the metal is has a specific heat of 0.466 um, joules. And there should be a slash there per gram degree C. And that's basically how you do a calorimetry problem. It's a very common lab to do. Um, and this is kind of how you do the calculations. And you can then try to identify, look at a table, and try to identify what metal has that specific heat value. And so that is heat with calculations. And we will talk about intermolecular forces and states of matter in the next unit.